think there was a nixala that is listening to us. And for those who are visiting us for the first time, we'd like to welcome you with a grateful heart. We lift you up to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Today is January 23rd. It's almost the end of January. But I bring you great news. I bring you good tidings. I bring you, the, let the presence of the Lord be with you throughout 2022. I am happy to be alive in the land of the living. And this morning, I want to remind you again, as we did on Wednesday night, that we are God's masterpiece. We are created in Jesus. You are all diamonds. We are not an accident. Your mistake will not let you miss out on God's purpose. I want to remind you this morning that you, our mistakes will not let us miss out on God's purpose. God loves us so much. He, he loves us everlastingly, infinitely. He loves us. I want to remind you on Nick Salar, and I would like to just welcome our lead pastor, our lead pastor, Ava Green. We thank God for her. We thank God that she has a role in the kingdom of God and she's shepherding us like never before. And we ask God that he would strengthen her. And I would like to welcome also my husband on this platform this morning, the first time. I salute him, Reverend Donald Bold. Can you open your mic so we can see your face? God bless you. And as I open in prayer, I'd like you all to pray with me because we'll be doing ex an exercise this morning where you will get involved. I'm going to speak and you will speak with me. Zoom will not be Zoom as usual. We I'm going to engage you. I'm going to engage you to okay. speak to the King of Kings because we have been just sitting down. But now this morning, we will be engaged to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Lord, how I thank you. How I thank you for a new year. I thank you, Amen. King of Kings. I thank you, Lord of Lords. I thank you, the Ancient of Days. I thank you, the Great I Am. Mm -hmm. I thank you, the Alpha and the Omega, that you are here with us this morning. Father, we know that God is here. The Son is here. And the Holy Spirit, all three in one, we thank you. We thank you for the many blessings you have given unto us, Lord. And this morning, I just want to shout out, Imela, thank you, Lord, because you are a God and a good father. Bless us today that this is a new day. This is a new beginning. And we ask you, Father, to dwell among us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And after this Amen. One exercise, I'll be talking to you about Jesus. So once I say the first sentence, I want you to open your mics and shout out his name, whatever name you want to call him, Jesus, Elohim, the great I am, the tits can you, whatever name, but we're going to get engaged this morning. So the first one is Jesus is the king of kings. And when I say he is the king of knowledge, open your mics and shout out what he is to you. So let me hear it now. His life is matchless. Open your mics and speak to me. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. His love never changes. Open your mics again. Jesus. Yeshua. His yoke Jesus. is easy. Yahweh. Jesus. He is the king of glory. Yeshua. He Yahweh. is the sovereign king. Dira. He supplies strength for the weak. He delivers the captive. He rewards the diligent. He is my king of kings. Thank you. And I never hear it loud. So all of you now, open your mics and say, Jesus. 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 Joshua. We thank you. He has so many different names. When you call on his name, he attends, he listens, and he comes forth. So thank you for participating in that exercise. Too many times we sit on Zoom and we don't get involved. And you feel like you should just listen. We want you to engage. It's church on Zoom. So I want the congregation to be involved. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Thank Saint you. Of God. 
And I'll be going right into the reading this morning. But those of you who have your iPad, your iPhone, don't just read on the screen, but you'll forget sometimes how to turn to the scriptures when we just look on the screen and read it. But this morning's scripture, I'm glad again for those who are just joining. Welcome, Kay. I don't know who Kay is. Welcome, Madge. The Bones family are on. We welcome you. We're happy to have you. Maxwell, if I don't call your name, some of you are old timers. Nini, you have been on the platform every week. But I want to. Really happy that the lead pastor is in the house. Angela, let me shout out everybody so you won't get jealous. Angela, Ashley, Tashina, Jordan. It's good to be, good to see you. Maxwell from Kenya. Karen from Jamaica, like myself. I think it's just no three of us from Jamaica right now. Anne in Florida. Pastor Ava, all the way in Florida. And Tamar, my girl, in Dallas. Thank you to the Bones family. I'm seeing Shirley and Madge. And I don't remember the husband name, Donald. Help me remember it. Christopher. <laughs> Christopher, <laughs> welcome you. We're happy that you're with us this morning. And Sister Ashley, the daughter of Pastor Creek. So I'll be turning to the scriptures, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. Since we have these promises, dear friends, dear new life for rise and saints, let us purify ourselves from the things that contaminates the body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. I read again. Since we have these promises, dear friends of New Life Horizon, put your name there. Ruth, all of us, put your name where it says friends. Let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates the body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. And as I read this verse, and when I read it yesterday and the day before, I kept on reading it. And I'm saying, God, what are the promises that you have for us? And he said to me, when I died on the cross, I receive you. I will be a father unto you. I love you infinitely. He's constantly thinking about us. Those are a few promises because Reverend Bolt will be preaching and sharing from the verse. And then it says, dear friends, Madge, Tashina, Jordan, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates the body. And what do you think is just maybe just grease or dirt? Because every, every minute now we're washing our hands because of COVID. But that's not what God wants. The, the, the Apostle Paul mm -hmm. here is encourage us to cleanse ourselves from all fleshly impurities. It's not the outward dirt that sometimes as we come in, we're so paranoid. We wash our hands with soap. We wash our hands with sanitizer. We are spraying up our cars. But the Lord is saying, it's not that he's talking about. It's what happens inside, inside of you. And there are three things I just want to highlight. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eye, and, that's, and the pride of life. That is what contaminates us as believers of God. So he's saying, purify yourself from those things. And the flesh speaks of the sexual immorality, idolatry, strife, anger, disobedience. So he's asking us to purify ourselves from those things, your body and the spirit, because he wants us to be holy. And what does perfecting holiness is all about? Perfecting holiness is the fear of God. And the fear of God, I'm not telling you to literally, is a fear that you have a reverence for him. When he speaks to you, you obey. It's a commandment of God. We are to love also as Christ loved. So my brothers and sisters, he's asking us to be holy because I am holy. Holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what he needs. And holiness comes with an intimacy with Christ. It's not just getting up and reading the word. It's spending time with him, hearing what he's saying. Because when you're intimate with your lover, right? You want to speak with him every day. You want to see him every day. You want to speak with him every hour sometimes. That is what Jesus is asking for. That is what the King of Kings is asking for, my brothers and sisters. So I want us to remember this verse. For this week, 
that we're to purify ourselves, perfecting in holiness, because that is what God wants. And for 2022, let us be intentional out of the reverence for God. So we thank God for what he's doing for us at NLH. Because from we have been on Zoom, I've seen him moving in so many different areas in our lives. He's taken us from glory to glory. But you have to spend time with him so he will take you to that level. And right about now, we'll be having our speaker. It's an honor and a privilege for me to pray over the speaker, which is not only just the speaker this morning. I am really happy to call him my husband, Reverend Donald Bolt, bone of my bone. Clap your hands, ladies. <laughs> oh God, there is hope. I mean, last two months, he was just Reverend Bolt. And this month, December, we decided to get God was the one that allowed us to be married. So he's actually my husband. A man that loved God. He loves soul. He loves people, and I'm happy that God chose. I can't even see his face because I'm on the side that God chose him for me. So it's his choice. I want to encourage you, my sisters on this platform, that you will receive a husband, but just wait on the Lord. Don't choose him. Let him do the choosing. He is faithful, as we have been saying. So stretch your hands towards him as I'm about to pray that God will infuse him with more power, more strength as he speaks his word. Father, we thank you for Reverend Donald Bode. We thank you, God, that he's a mighty man of valor. We ask you, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit upon him this morning, a fresh anointing as he ministers to us on this platform. How we thank you for his life. We're asking you, God, that you put a hedge around him a blood covering, not just over him, but over his entire family, his sisters that are on, the brother-in-law, his children, Lord, that they will be well. And they will all be able to say, it is well with my, with my soul. I thank you for him. And I ask you that you'll continue to infuse him with your strength, with your efficacious blood from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And Father, be it unto him. We give you praise and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Over to you, Reverend Bolt. Good morning, everyone. Morning, morning, morning. It's good to be on this platform once again. It's a privilege. I never take it for granted. I really don't. And um, my wife is awesome, isn't she? She's awesome. <laughs> I, I thank God for every day, you know, um, that he brought her in my life. She's tremendous, so beautiful. Um, this morning, I have a word to bring to you that the Holy Spirit has laid on my heart. And um, it's a heavy word. You know, it's really um, a burden, you could call it, but it has to be delivered. Okay, and... Um, the title of my message is Holiness Without Which No One Will See God. That's the title. And the running scripture is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 to 16, and also Hebrews 12 and verse 14. Apostle Peter, let me pray before I start. Father, I thank you for the privilege of dispense in your word use it to your glory father let it penetrate the hearts of your people so that they will realize and understand what is required of them i give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor i just ask that you use my vocal cords to deliver the message in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I will do my best to deliver this message and I won't, I won't be long, I promise you, um, but I want you to pay close attention. 
close attention to what is being said to you by the Holy Spirit, not me, but him. Apostle Peter was writing to the, the Christians who were scattered all over Asia Minor because of persecution. They were suffering. And he was writing to them to encourage them to keep the faith. Don't give up. And at one point, he made a statement that I found very significant, very telling. He says in chapter 1, starting from verse 13, he says, Therefore, guard your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not conduct yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he who has called you holy, so be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. He's telling them, don't forget to conduct yourself in a holy manner. Even though you are going through suffering and hardship, don't forget who you are and who you belong to. You know, we all feel the, the happiest when we blow the trumpet of Jubilee, proclaiming the peace to the brokenhearted, freedom to the captive, and the opening of prison to them that are bound. We feel good when we hear that. But God's watchman has another trumpet that he must blow. The trumpet, when he sees disaster and tribulation coming because of how God's children are living their lives. To arouse the church from their sleep. Because believe it or not, the church is asleep. Deep sleep. I just stop here to say this. My country that I love so very much, Jamaica is being overrun right now with crime, vicious crime. And yet, Jamaica has the most churches per square mile than any country in the world. What's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with that picture? The church is asleep. The prime minister recognizes it. I heard him recently calling on the church for help. He's calling to the church for help because the church is asleep. You see, God can only use us effectively when we live life according to his principles. When we live life that are pure, life that are clean, he can use the vessel to do great things. We must ask the question quite often, where are we and where are we going? We must ask that question. We have to survey our lives and see our state before God. Yes, we must do that constantly. It's interesting that the first song in scripture in the Bible and the last song in scripture, the first song is in Exodus chapter 15 and the last song is in Revelation 15, 3 to 4. And they all focus on the holiness of God. On the holiness of God. John was given the vision to see the future. He saw the moment when the final outpouring of God's wrath 
was about to take place. He saw in heaven those whose faith and allegiance to God in defiance of the rule of the Antichrist had cost, has, had cost them their lives. They died because they opposed the Antichrist and they were in heaven. John told us that they sung of God's servant, they sung the song of God's servant Moses and the song of the Lamb. And here is a song. Revelation 15 to 4, 3, 3 to 4. Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgment have been revealed. The word holy is used more often as a prefix to God's name than any other adjectives. That word holy. It is used more often as a prefix to God's name than any other adjectives. Two men in scripture were permitted to see into the throne room of heaven too and wrote about it. They both reported hearing one continuous refrain. Spoken day and night, this refrain was spoken day and night. That's what the scripture says. It says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. No attributes of God is repeated three times. None but this. None. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The angels sing day and night. Day and night. This morning, uh, it's, I'll be quick, but this morning I want to show you the truth about God that is so mysterious, alarming, and awesome. This God is awesome. This God, you can't understand him. He has to reveal himself to you. Now you understand, now I understand why Job, the righteous Job, the scripture said he was blameless and upright. He was a man of God. And when the Lord revealed himself to Job, Job would say to God, my ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. When he saw the holiness, the purity of the God that he was serving, that he never knew, he said he despised himself and repent in dust and ashes. Isaiah, a man of God, who studied and proclaimed the righteousness of God. Before he had a, count, a personal encounter with God, the day he had that personal encounter with God, Isaiah, this is what he walked away and he said, Woe is me, for I am ruined because I am a man of unclean lips and live among people of unclean lips because my eyes have seen the King, the, the Lord of hosts. This God we serve, we need to know him. We don't know him. We don't know him. He's a God that is pure. He's a God that is spotless. He's a God that does not know sin. He cannot tolerate sin. So much so that when his son died on the cross, and when he saw the burden, the sin that his son took upon his shoulder, 
He couldn't look at him. He had to turn away. And his son cried out and he said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Our sin stand between us and God. Our sin stand between us and God. We must examine our life daily. We must, sanctification is a daily walk. It's a minute by minute walk. We have to go before him and repent because we are not living to the standard to which he has called us to live. I spoke to my cousin last night in Trelawney and she said, I said to her, how is Jamaica? And she said, cause Jamaica has been overridden by crime. It's overrun by crime. Every day you get up, somebody's killed. They're killing people like animals. And I said to her, but Aunt Lily, there's so many churches in Jamaica. Don't tell me that the churches are powerless. Huh? Are they powerless? More churches per square mile than anywhere else in the world? And the crime is rampant in Jamaica? But you know, I have come to understand and realize that the church is not living, the Christians, the saints, are not living up to their potential. What God has implanted in them, they are not living accordingly. And therefore, God cannot use them to do powerful work on this earth. Because they lack the purity, the holiness that he requires. They lack it. Recently, I give you an example. Recently, I spoke to a friend of mine, this lady. And she was dating this guy and I met him and after I met him, I said to her, that's not the guy for you. He's not the right person for you. And she said, but why? I said, you will see in time. So I saw her last week and I said, how are you doing? She said, I'm doing fine in dawn. I am dating someone. I said, the same guy. She said, no, he's no good. I have to let him go. I said, who are you dating now? She said, I'm dating a, a deacon in the church. I said, what church is this? She said, the Pentecostal church. I said, what church do you belong to? She said, she belonged to the Catholic church and she's not leaving her Catholic church for no other church. I said, okay. Then she said, then I said to her, I said, please keep your relationship pure. And when I said pure, she said, what do you mean? I said, do not have sex with him before marriage. She said, what? She said, but doll, I have already done it. She said, I've already had sex with him. And I said, my God, but am I, am I here judging that man and judging her? No, by no means, by no means. Because we were all there at some point in our life before we come to truly know Christ. But I'm telling you this to show you how the church is lacking in purity. It's lacking in the purity that God demands for us to exhibit. And we wonder why is the church powerless? Why? These are the reasons. Because our sin separates us from the Almighty God. Uh, what does it mean to say God is holy? To be holy is to be distinct, separate, unique. Does that sound like any one of us? Does that sound like you? Does that sound like me? To be distinct, separate, and unique. God wants his people, people to be uncommon in this world. 
unique, separate. That's what he has called us to. to. He has called us to a separate, unique life that the world will see and gravitate towards. But are we living that life? Are we truly living the life that God has called us to live? A pure life? The scripture says without holiness, no one will see God. That's a serious statement. That's a very, very serious statement. Your conduct and your speech Can I distinguish you from the world? Can I? Can he? When we say God is holy, we are not talking about one character out of many about God. We are talking about the character of God himself. Is pure, holy. There's no one like him. No one can be compared to him. Holiness, when applied to God, means that is eternal, is utterly unique, incomparable, matchless, and without comparison. That's the God we're talking about. That's the God that says, come up to my standard, my children. Come up to my standard. Demonstrate my holiness. Demonstrate my purity to the world. The Jews, the Hasidic, Hasidic Jews, are afraid to use the word Yahweh. You know why? Because they say it is sacred and holy and if you are around them and you use that name they will move away from you they recognize the holiness and the sacredness of that word Yahweh God expects us to demonstrate his holiness to the world this was the problem the Israelites had the Hebrew had it. God chose them to be a peculiar people. They were to be an example of what the kingdom of God is all about. But they started mixing with the nations around them. And they got corrupted. They started marrying to their wife, to their women, and started worshiping their gods. When God had called them, to reflect his holiness to the world. And so God had to step in and show them that I am God and I have called you and chosen you as a peculiar people and I want you to live accordingly. He's saying the same thing to you and I today. No difference. He's saying the same thing to Donald George Bolt He's saying the same thing to Ruth. He's saying the same thing to Eva. He's saying the same thing to everyone on this platform. I have called you to demonstrate my holiness and my purity. You must do so in your speech and in your conduct. Recently, I was at work and this lady came in. This Jewish lady came in. And before you come into the hospital, you have to sanitize your hands and take your temperature. She came in and I said to her, ma'am, you have to um, sanitize your hands and take your temperature. She said, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I said, but it's a protocol. You have to do that before you see the doctor. I don't want to do that. I, I found myself getting angry. Who is this lady coming to tell me that she's not coming to my home and tell me that she's not going to do X and Y. Who, who is she? So I was able to calm myself. Calm myself. And I said, okay, no problem. Go ahead. And she went and she saw the doctor. 
And you know, I was there when she came out. And when she came out, she came right over to me. And she said, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I don't know why I reacted like that, but I'm so sorry. And I held her by her arm and I said, you know, after you left, I started thinking. And I said to myself, I don't know what your day has been like. Maybe you had a rough day. I don't know. So I've decided that I'm not going to hold it against you. I forgive you. You can go in peace. Now, what if I had gotten angry with her? Because I had the right to do it and send her out. Because she refused to follow the protocol. Would she have come back to me and said she's sorry? And I had a chance to talk to her. Would she? You see, we have to, when it comes on to God's holiness and purity, we have to practice it intentionally. We have to practice it deliberately. I remember one month ago, I was walking from home to take the train. And the voice said to me, internal voice said to me, Donald, whatever you do for the kingdom, you must do it intentionally. Everything you do, do it intentionally. That's how it works. Because this fallen nature of us will not allow us to do it naturally. It won't. It is fallen. Watch your speech. Watch your conduct as you live this life. Without holiness, no one will see God. And Paul is here telling the, 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 the Christians in Asia that was scattered. He said, don't forget. Be sober. Be vigilant. Don't forget to conduct your way yourself in a holy manner. Because the one you serve is holy. John, the Lord told John to, wrote, to write to the seven churches in Revelation. And you know why? They were living life contrary to God's will, to God's holiness. Contrary. But he's such a merciful God. He always warns us before he rebukes us. Before he brings disaster. He warns us. That's how he is. He can't help himself. He's going to warn his children first. And so one of the church, churches that John wrote to, that the Lord told him to wrote to, was the, the Laodicea, Laodicea. And I want to read it. To the angel of the church in Laodicea, right. The amen, the faithful, and the true witness, <coughs> the beginning of the creation of God, says these things. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich and I've stored up good and have need of nothing. Yet, yet, you realize that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire, <coughs> that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be dressed, that the shame of your nakedness may not appear, and anoint your eyes with eyes, I solve that you may see those whom I love I rebuke and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Listen, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, 
I will come in and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcome will I grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father and his throne. He who has an ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. He's speaking to the church. He's speaking to you and I. He's speaking to you and I this morning. And he's saying, cleanse your life. Clean your life. Check your purity. Check your holiness. Does it match up to what I've asked you to do? Are you living your life according to the standard of this world? We are called to be an example. We are called to be an example to the world. The world wants what we have, but they need to see it. What we have is marketable. It is valuable. They want it, but we must let them see it. <coughs> In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, Paul says this. He says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? He's asking you, do you know? Do you, are you aware of it? If any man defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy and you are the temple. He says you are the temple. The temple of God is holy and you are the temple. His holiness must reflect in the temple, the vessel. Do you see? Do you see how far we, how far we have gone? We cannot truly live for him and until we have a revelation of him. You know, the scripture came, comes to mind when Peter, the fisherman, fished all night and brought the boat ashore. And Jesus said to him, lend me your boat for a while. Let me sit in it. And he gave Jesus the boat. And Jesus taught the people from the boat. And after Jesus was finished teaching, he said, pushed about the boat out into the deep and cast the net down for a catch. And Peter said to him, Lord, we have fished all night and we have caught nothing. But because you said it, I will do it. And he cast the net into the sea. And the scripture says that the net was filled with fish to the point where it started breaking. He had to call his friends with the other boats to help him to carry the fish ashore. When Peter rea realized who he was speaking to, the scripture says he went on his knees and he said to Jesus, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. He says, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. What, what did Peter see? What did Peter, what revelation he had? Why he said that? Peter saw purity and oldness before him. That's what he saw. And he had to bow. He said, depart, move. I, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And Jesus turned to him and he said to him, as of today, you will be fishers of men. You'll be fishers of men. And the scripture says, uh, this is very, very, very telling. The scripture says, after Peter brought the, 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 the boat ashore, he left everything, his career, and followed Jesus. When you see purity, when you see holiness, you will follow it. You will follow it. I guarantee you will. 
you give up everything and follow it. Because it's what you want. It's what we truly want. We don't know but what, what we truly want. I'm saying to you this morning, let us live our life to please the king. Let us truly live this world, this life in this, on this planet to please the king of glory. A saving holiness. In conclusion, let me say this. Let me ask a question. I'm going to ask you. Do you have the holiness of God working for you in Christ? Or is his holiness set against you? Have you fled to Christ? Deliberately, personally, trusting that what he did on the cross is your only hope of being right with God? Are you still carrying your sin and appointment with the fierce wrath? of God I want you to think about that I truly want you to meditate on that what is the evidence in your life that the Holy Spirit of God dwells in you what is the evidence does your behavior your choices your habits your language shows that you are in the language of Peter in the language of Peter 2.9, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his possession so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Into his marvelous light. Paul wrote to the Corinthians who were the Corinthians church and they were having a lot of things going on there, division, immorality. And he wrote to them and he said to them, don't you know who you are? Don't you know? Can't, you can't conduct yourself like this. You belong to the Holy One. You can't go back to the former lust of the world. You can't behave like the world. Some of them were sleeping. One man was sleeping with his father's wife. They were taking their, their, their Christians to, to the court. And Paul was instructing them that you can't live like this. This is not you. This is what you are called for. You are not called for this. I am saying to us this morning as saints, on this platform, be careful how you live your life. Live your life consciously, knowing that you belong to a mighty God who is holy and pure and cannot look at sin. He can't. So wake up. Wake up and live the Christian life. So at the end of it, he will say to you, welcome, my child. Welcome to the kingdom. You have lived well. You have lived well. So as you go through this week, I want you to reflect on this message. Please live your life to please him. Don't live your life to please yourself, nor the world. This flesh will destroy you if you allow it. It is always wrestling with the spirit. It will destroy you. Live our life to please the King of glory, the one who we have accepted and the one who have called us to live for him and to proclaim his gospel to those who don't know him. Thank you for listening. Father, I thank you for the word that you have dispensed this morning. Lord, I just ask that your people will take it seriously. And that they will choose to live their life holy mm. and acceptable in your sight. Because your word says you search the world 
seeking for those whose heart is set towards you because those are the people that you use. I thank you, Lord, for using this vessel, this vessel to dispense your word to your people. I give you all the praise. I take none of it. I give you all the glory in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Reverend Bolt. Father, I just thank you for the word that came through your son. And I pray, Father, that I be sure that, Lord, that you will bless him abundantly. That the same holiness, Father God, that you have shared with him this morning to share with us, Father, let his life represent that level of holiness, God. It is his desire to walk in holiness before you. And so we pronounce the blessing upon him this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We, with such a message, there is a need for a response. And the response is Is it time for worship, Ruth? I'm sorry if I got it, I got your thing mixed up. I'm sorry. No, we just have a song, Holiness. Okay, go but ahead. But you have already yeah, prayed ahead. for this speaker, so. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, no, it's, I, I took it's the wrong okay. cue. It's okay, Pastor. That's fine. Thank you for praying for Reverend Bolt. And I would also like to welcome those who just joined, Onisia and Ronit. I I muted, but she came up. Well, right now we're going to sit, have a song, Holiness. And after which Tamar again will pray for this week and then mm. over to Pastor. Yes. But thank yes. you, Pastor, because you can't have more than one prayer. We mm. thank you for the Pastor of the house. We acknowledge you. We honor oh, you. Lord. Lord. We give God thanks. Lord. So over to you. Mark, you know, pray for Reverend Bo, and then over to Pastor. Good morning, everyone. Reverend Bo, thank you so much for that timely message. We always need, just reminds us that we always need to be examining ourselves in front of God, as you said. Father, we come before you and we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that, Lord, you never forget us, that your eyes are always upon us, God, that you're always watching us, Father, and that you always know, Father, when to bring the word, to, what word to us, Father, when to remind us, Father, when to cause us to examine ourselves in front of you. And God, as we examine ourselves for you, Father, we just pray, oh God, that you help us to be honest with ourselves, God, and to be honest with you. Father, for all have sinned and fallen short, oh God, but as we examine ourselves before you, Father, give us the courage, Lord, to surrender and to submit and to ask for your forgiveness, oh God. Father, strengthen us as we continue to walk with you, like, oh God, I pray. And Lord, I lift Reverend Bolt up before you, Father. I thank you, Father, for his obedience. I thank you, Father, for his sacrifice, for his time and his effort and his energy, Father. I thank you, Lord, that he has a heart for us, your children, Lord, and that he, he exhorts us, Father, with such passion, Lord, that we're forced, Lord, to look at ourselves before you. Father, I pray that as he has ministered to us, O oh God, so, Father, will you continue to minister to him, to fill him up, Father God. I pray, mighty God, that as he continues, Father, to walk with you, Lord, that you will continue to strengthen him, Father. I pray, mighty God, that he will grow in strength and in might, Father, in, in your kingdom, Lord. And that, Lord, that his audience, Father, will be bigger and bigger, oh God, because, Lord, he has such a passion for you, oh God. Father, he speaks from such a place of passion, God, that we're forced, Lord, to examine his words, God. So I pray, Lord, that you enlarge his territory. Father, I pray that you, 
you 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 form a hedge of protection around him, Father. That as he goes out, Lord, that you will protect him. You'll protect his going out and his coming in, oh God. I pray, Father, that you will provide for him, God, that you provide for him bountifully, oh God. I pray, mighty God, that he will fall deeper and deeper in love with you every day, oh God. Father, I thank you for this powerful man of God. And I pray, Lord, that you just add, that you just increase his ministry, Father, that you add increase to him, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Pastor. With such a message, it requires a response. Amen. And a response that you may not necessarily feel comfortable doing in, in a group setting, but it's a response that you must have mm -hmm. or must make. And you may hear him, past Reverend Boat mentioned sexual immorality. You may say, No, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not having sex. Mm -hmm. And so you may think that holiness is only for holiness is only the call for those who are sexually active out of marriage. And God is saying to you, no. Holiness is for the for those who we have called to be obedient in all areas of your life. Holiness is a call to distinguish yourself. He kept mentioning conduct and in speech. Holiness is to become and knowing that you are the temple of God. Holiness is being intentional and deliberate in your act, in your thought life. Holiness is living distinct from the world. Holiness is being dead to sin and alive to God in Christ. Holiness is being accountable to others, accountable for your thoughts, accountable for your motive, accountable for your actions, that there's someone you can share with and say, I have the tendency or the tendencies of doing this. Hold me accountable. We cannot live holy on our own. It is the Holy Spirit who comes as, as Reverend Bold told us, that the Holy Spirit lives in us because we are the temple. He says, he quoted 1 Corinthians 3, 69, says, the temple of God and the spirit of God lives in you. But not only that, the God goes a little further. He gives us each other. And just like the mechanic comes and checks the engine of the car because without the engine, the car can't run. So we have to check our purity and our holiness. And if you have not yet made Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you may choose to live holy and you can't live holy without accepting Christ as Savior. You cannot do it on your own. You need the empowering of the Holy Spirit. So if you have not yet say, surrendered your life to Christ, if you have not yet said yes to Lord, Lord, come and be the captain. Come and be the leader. Come and show me how to live. Come and be my Lord. Then this call to holiness, you cannot attain. And so the call goes out first and foremost to those who have yet to say yes to Christ. And if there's anyone on the line this morning that wants to say yes to Christ, you, you know you have not said yes to God by him coming and being your Lord, where you no longer do things on your own and you say, Lord, you lead me. This is an opportunity given to you. And if you, you are that person, I'd love for you to raise your hand. I see your hand, Jordan. And so we're going to stop this morning and we are going to minister. We're going to pray to Jordan for Jordan this morning. I want you to right where you are to be praying for Jordan. Jordan has said yes to the Lord. Jordan has said, yes, I want Jesus first and foremost as my Lord and Savior. And so Jordan, it 
can sometimes seem complicated, but it's quite simple. It's a confession that you make not only with your lips, but that your heart is saying yes to the words that you're going to either repeat or pray from your own heart. And I am going to say some words and I'm going to ask you to repeat them, but only if you mean them. I I'm going to say them and I want you to listen to what I'm saying. And then you can repeat it, not only with your lips, but from a declaration from your heart saying, Father, I want to be your son this morning. I want to accept Jesus this morning. I want you to be my Lord this morning. And for those who are on the line, I want you to just right where you are, just be praying for Jordan this morning and just be covering him and, and knowing that there is a battle in heaven, even as he makes this, there's a battle in the heavenly realms, even as he makes this declaration. We know the angel, angels are rejoicing, but we know that the enemy of, the, of, of Jordan's soul and the enemy of God will be waging war even now. And so, so we pray first for Jordan. Father, as Jordan declares these words, Father, I pray that you cover his mind even now under the blood of Jesus. No weapon formed against you, Jordan, will prosper in the name of Jesus. And either you declare today that Jesus be your Lord and Savior. I pray the covering of Christ. I pray the Holy Spirit will come and endure you and embody you with power. That he'll come and cause you and show you how to live this life. That he'll be with you. That he will walk with you. He will live within you. And that you will be empowered to be all that God has called you to do and to be. So Jordan, I want you to repeat after me. Father, Father, I accept your son, Jesus. I accept your son, Jesus. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Father, I cannot do this on my own. Father, I cannot do this on my own. And therefore, I accept you, Father. Therefore, I accept you, Father. I accept you, Holy Spirit. I accept you, Holy Spirit. I accept you, Jesus. I accept you, Jesus. To lead and to guide me each day. Lead and to guide me each day. Father, you said in your word. Father, you said in your word. That if I confess with my mouth. That if I confess with my mouth. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. And if I believe in my heart. If I believe in my heart. That you God raised him from the dead. That you God raised him from the dead. I will be saved. I will be saved. And so Father I receive you this morning. And so Father I receive you this morning. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so, Father, we believe that based on the confession of Jordan this morning, that he is now a child of the king. And so, Jordan, we welcome you into the kingdom of God this morning. We welcome you, Jordan, into the kingdom of God this morning. You are no longer an outsider, but you are a child of the king, Jordan. Jordan, the scripture tells us that when one comes Hallelujah. to Christ and accepts him as God, there's a, there's a celebration in heaven. There's rejoicing in heaven. And so we rejoice with you, Jordan, for making that step. We rejoice with you, Jordan. Hallelujah. Yes to God. Yes to living that life. As the, no, Jordan, you know what you are? You are, a, you are the temple of the living God. That God himself is coming to live on the inside of you and he's going to empower you each day to live. Jordan, he says, cast all your cares on him, Jordan, and he will work the things out for you. Trust him with everything, Jordan. Hallelujah. Because he knows the step, he knows the way that Hallelujah. Jordan should go. And so, Father, we bless your son this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we bless your son this morning. We bless him this morning, Father. We bless him this morning, God. Thank you, Lord. We bless him this morning, Father. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And, and Pastor, may I just say something? Jordan, as I looked across your name, I hear the Lord saying, as Moses was in the backside of the desert, you have been in the backside of the desert. And he's saying to you this morning, he's calling you out for such a time as this. You will be the catalyst of change in your family. I hear the Lord saying that he will appear to you as he appeared to Moses. And I say, God, do it unto him, Lord. Yes. Your grandmother has been praying. And this prayer is answered this morning in her midst. But I hear the Lord saying, you have been in the backside of the desert. You have been hiding. He wants to take you out. So, Father, I ask that you will do a work. And he said, like the burning bush, he will appear and you will save your nieces, nephews, cousins. God is saying through, through you, a lot will be turned. Your family will turn to God, but you have work to do. So, God, we thank you once again for him. And we thank you, Lord, that he has been through so much. The enemy tried to take him out, but God. So, Father, I put the hedge of protection, the blood covering on him now, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And as he steps into your kingdom, God, like Moses, there is work for him to do. I thank you for your word. He's no longer in the backside of the desert because here he is. He is your son. He is the one that you're calling for such a long time. Thank you, God, that he has hearkened unto your word. I give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We rejoice with you this morning, Jordan. Welcome, my yes. brother. Yes. Welcome amen. to the family of God. Amen. Amen. No, Jordan. Yeah. I just have to say this. Um, you may not totally understand what happened this morning mm -hmm. with you. I tell you this. The moment you accepted Christ a moment ago, the angel left with your name, wrote it in the book of life. The time you accepted the Lord and the place you accepted him is all mm -hmm. written down. And when you get there, you will see it. Amen. Amen. Welcome home, Jordan. Welcome home. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 God. But you know, and so we rejoice with Jordan, but the call is also to us. The call is also to us. What is the evidence we were asked that the Holy Spirit lives in you? I'm living the evidence that the Holy Spirit lives in you. Are we any different from the, do we respond to things differently from the world? Is there any difference between the world and us? Because holiness is setting apart and in the sanctification is moving away from it. It, 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 it is offering something up for noble, for noble purposes. And God is speaking to you and I this morning. And so before we go, I want to pronounce a blessing on all of us. And so I want you to raise your hands in receiving the blessing. And the blessing is going to be different this morning, not from one that we normally would hear. But the blessing this morning to you is be sexually pure. Be obedient to God in all areas of your life. Be distinguishable from the world in your conduct and in your speech. Be the holy temple of God. Be intentional and deliberate in your actions. Live lives that are distinct from the world as you know you, are, you belong to, the, to God himself. Be dead to sin but at the same time, be alive to God in Christ. Be accountable, my sisters and my brothers, in, in your thoughts, in your action, in your speech. 
and allow the blessing of God to flow through you because you are the temple of God. And so may the Lord continue to bless you this week as you remember who you are. You are the temple of God and he has called you to be as holy as he is holy. You know, it just made sense a while ago. The only reason why he would have called us to be holy as he is holy is because we are the temple. And the holiness cannot live in an unholy vessel. That is the reason. He is holy. And he wants to live in something that is holy. Yeah. I hope yeah. that goes off in your spirit the way it just went off in mind for the first time. Yeah. 